in this instance, Madeline's considered our creator because she actually comes with a large social following. You know, she posts to YouTube, she edits her own videos, she's very engaged on Instagram. And so the idea is to really tap into that audience. And then we were lucky enough from a pure casting perspective to bring on Chloe Bailey. And we really... I mean, Chloe Bailey, hello. Got her at the exact right time in her trajectory. This is her first film role. She had done some work on Grownish. Um, and no joke, after we left Albuquerque, probably weeks later, she was on the VMAs and, and releasing her first song, Have Mercy. And it's the Chloe you see today is very different th than the Chloe we knew on set. And we couldn't like be more proud of seeing everything she's done in just a year since we, oh, we yeah, wrapped. No, Have Mercy, the music video came out in our first, like in week three of being in the edit room. And and my editor and I were like, wow, cool. <laughs> and it's funny. And then I realized, I was like, why does this song sound so familiar? Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, because on set between takes, she was like humming Have Mercy. And my editor pointed out she noticed it from the dailies. So I was like, oh, my God, that's why I know the song. That's right. Good evening, everyone. I'm Joe Newmeyer, film critic for WOR Radio. Let's have a huge round of applause, please, for Jane. And it's my pleasure now to welcome writer-director Sabrina Jaglum and producer Adam Westcott. Thank you both so much for being here and congratulations on the film. There is so much going on in it, uh, so many ideas, but Sabrina, I want to ask you right off, obviously, what was the, the origin of it? What got you to write, uh, put pen to paper, as it were, or fingers to keyboard? <laughs> yeah, well, I co-wrote this film with my friend Rishi Rajani, and um, we had talked about wanting to make a movie about anxiety and the pressure that kids face today, particularly around college admissions. We both had younger siblings who were kind of going through the process, and I think we had PTSD, like, <laughs> talking about it with them. Mm -hmm. um, and particularly, uh, you know, I went to a school very similar to the one in the movie. Um, and particularly in my school, you know, you really know everyone's business and it is really competitive. But also, uh, the way social media plays a role in, in young people today was something I really wanted to explore and that we wove in, obviously, throughout the film. Um, because we just don't know how that's going to really affect people moving forward. Right, right. In fact, one of the things that, that strikes me about the film is how it, it's it's sort of, it's weaponized, but it's also, uh, in in some ways, an, an alternate sort of form of of students being able to get one up on on competitors or, or their, what they view as competitive students, right? Totally. I mean, it's anonymous yeah. and it's also not. So you can use it in both ways. You can use it to attack people. You can also use it to brag or to present a certain image of yourself. Um, and I think, you know, even if you logically understand, okay, this is not actually reality. This is not actually this person. It's not actually me. You still feel it. You still feel um, the way it can hurt you. Yeah. Um, and like in my high school, it was right when social media kind of started really becoming quite so popular. And there was a ton of bullying and a ton of um, people using it as a way to get what they wanted or to attack people. Yeah, yeah. Adam, uh, from Creative Plus's point of view, uh, as a as a production company and and trying to get content out into the into the people's people's in front of their eyeballs, this kind of thing is very important because obviously there's there's a tack that people sort of want to accept about social media that it's that it's not as as damning or that it's not as uh it doesn't have as many reverberations as it does but, but obviously issues like this are important to to all of these stories that you want to put out right yeah i mean a lot of the content that we look at is ya focused and the reality with gen z is they are glued to their phone so almost every script we see come through has some form of social media in it what i think was most interesting here is we played it in a very practical way we did not want to make it graphic after graphic, you know, bubbles, pop-ups. Um, so it really was integrated into the story itself. And some people even say connect is a character on its own. Yeah, yeah, that's beautifully said. Yeah. Let's talk about the character of Olivia. We'll talk about the performances in a moment uh, because they're all so, so terrific and, and in-depth. But but the character of Olivia, Sabrina, what was, what was the key to her for you? Was there an aspect to her that you wanted to make sure kind of came to the fore? Yeah, Olivia is such an interesting character because she goes on this crazy journey and uh, it's not that she's, I mean, she does a very, very horrible, bad thing, but it's, she's doing it, she has blinders on. And this film is so rooted in her perspective. She is someone who will 
strive for success no matter what, no matter the cost. And it's really comes from anxiety and this need for perfection that she believes. I, I really like that it's all internal pressure. You know, a lot of times in films you see, oh, I have to do this to get in here or my parents are making me or the circumstances are forcing this. And it was really about internal anxiety and the way that um, she's forcing herself down this path and she believes she needs to do this to get what she wants. Yeah. From a writer's point of view, it's really interesting to think about how you want to make sure that a character like that stays sympathetic, even as you're, and we have so much sympathy for her, even as we're watching her sort of make the wrong decisions. What was that challenge like for you as a writer? Yeah, you want to you wanna feel sympathetic to her and, and care about what happens to her while also at the end not saying, oh, good for you. Like at the end saying like, holy shit, like this person's <laughs> a problematic. And I think what was really interesting was finding someone and, you know, speaking of casting, but like who really you felt the fragility at the beginning. You felt, first of all, she's going, she's experiencing grief. She's going through a tough time. Second of all, she has severe anxiety. And so I think using the perspective to put her, you, the audience in her panic attacks um, is part of it because you feel for her, but also really someone who you understand, they care a lot and they're really fragile and they're like teetering on the edge. And when they flip over, you're like, okay, well, I see how she did it. It's not okay, but I get how she got there. Right, right. You can see the progression from A to B and all the way down to Right. To and not saying, oh, good job, but saying, oh, I see how that happened. I think yeah. not only, not so much sympathy, but allows you to really follow her journey. Yeah. Did she change a lot from first draft until the shooting script? Did, did, did the character kind of develop nuances or things you weren't anticipating in some ways? Definitely. Um, the biggest change was, well, definitely Izzy and Olivia's relationship went through some work and, you know, the nuance of uh, in high school, okay, I've known this person since I was a kid, yeah. but our friendship changes and it's weird. It's like almost these familial relationships where you've used to be close, but you're not anymore, but nothing happened. So mm -hmm. the nuances of that relationship changed a lot and interweaving the role Jane played in their relationship, both present and past. Yeah. Adam, from a from a perspective looking at it from Creative Plus, was there a sense that that the character needed to kind of really reflect, uh, obviously, what's going on right now in Gen Z and in this generation that, uh, that are high school seniors, but also sort of a sense of a uh, cautionary tale in some ways? Were you guys looking at the character and to kind of make sure that it kind of had a, a, a sense of realism about her? Oh, absolutely. I think that was one of the reasons that uh, we really appreciated the story was it feels evergreen. I mean, the characters in the story, although there is the storyline of social media, I think the themes will last forever. And there is like a little bit of sort of a 90s throwback and even the style of it. And it, you know, I feel like it, it's a cautionary tale and people will appreciate it no matter what time period they watch it in. Yeah, yeah. I'll even go back even farther and say there's obviously like a, an all about Eve aspect to it. Oh, totally. Somebody, right? yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. it's it's these people, these characters who do bad things to get what they want, but it's not it's almost not self-serving because yeah. it's it's they have this belief that they need it. It's it's someone who's a little unwell, um, and you know characters that will do whatever it takes. Yeah. Well, and there's like some very interesting things that I hope people caught on along the way that it's a very female focused film. There's very few speaking males other than <laughs> Mr. Richardson and the parents themselves play a very minimal role. So the pressures that Olivia has, she's put on herself. I mean, yeah. the parents are sort of removed. Yeah. 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 It was kind of about how at that age, you know, you don't really engage with adults typically and adults, even like the guidance counselor and the principal who are, Hey, they're saying that they're doing what they're supposed to. They're saying I'm here, but they don't push too hard. They don't look too deep. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's not that it's their fault. It's actually the opposite. It's it's not, they're not the ones putting the pressure on them. It's coming from within and they're checking in, probably not doing enough, but it's really about kids. Cause I think at that age, you, you only really, you feel like your friendships are everything, you know, everything's very all consuming. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's important to have these stories about young women, obviously, uh, and the more the better, but the, they are so rare. And yet they are also uh, this kind of kind of story needs to be able to to attract those audiences and, and have them relate to these characters. Right. Yeah. Well, that's a, so I went to a yeah. all girls school. So that was part of the impetus. But the other reason was, you know, I think a lot of movies set in high school are really about if they're about women, they're about, you know, what boy they have a crush on or yeah. are they going to the dance or prom or the football, whatever. And I think um it was a decision in setting an all-girls school because that wasn't a big experience in my high school. And so really not giving it 
um, any opportunity to arise, really making it so, hey, this has to be about the friendships, about the pressure. And I also think female friendships of that age are very complex because they're very intense. You know, you share a lot of feelings and emotions and it's very competitive, but also loving. It's it's complicated. And so stripping it away of the male counterpart, I think, allows f- space for that without anyone saying, hey, like, what about who they have a crush on? Yeah. 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 We've got a room full of actors here, so we're going to talk about those amazing performances and your amazing cast. Let's have a round of applause, by the way, for this incredible cast of Jane. And we'll start, of course, with Madeleine, Madeleine Petch, who has obviously a a following from Riverdale and has got a tremendous body of work as well. What brought you to her and how did the two of you connect on the role? Yeah, so um, this was early on in the process. I, we had finished writing the script and um, we're starting to go out to actors and I began meeting with people in that age range and that age range is tough because, you know, they age out of it quickly um, and a lot of them are working on TV shows, so scheduling can be difficult and um, kind of what you're saying, finding an actor who you believe at the beginning as this fragile type A, very intense, driven woman, but also at the end can go to that length. And I felt like I met with some amazing actors who um, kind of embodied one half or the other. And Madeline was one of the first people who really, I felt, encompassed both sides of the character and who also had that presence. You know, she's in, except for the first scene and every single scene in the movie, um, and someone who I felt could really carry that. So we met... Um, it got sent to her from her agency. We met, we talked about it. We had a great conversation and she really got it. She got the anxiety. She got what she's going after. And then she taped and she gave a great performance and also just, you know, I always love to say this like to actors like she really she like set up her camera in different parts of her room and she really like you know like she did one more scene than I had asked for she was just like she showed she cared and that really made a big difference to me too yeah. and she I mean we can't say enough good things about Madeline she's a consummate professional mm-hmm. she literally is in every single scene and we had a very sm- this is low budget indie film we had a very small window to work with her Riverdale schedule yeah. so we were 15 days in Albuquerque we ran into a little bit of a, a COVID shutdown and Madeline as a producer on the project really rolled with the punches and helped us get through it all um, yeah. and the final product of her performance I think is speaks for itself completely so yeah she was the first real attachment and then we brought that package to Creative Plus yeah, yeah. and from Creative Plus's point of view developing these relationships obviously with these great performers and these great teams are so important to be able to kind of build up that that body of work right well so in this instance Madeline's considered our creator because she actually comes with a large social following you know mm-hmm. she posts to YouTube she edits her own videos she's very engaged on Instagram and so the idea is to really tap into that audience and then we were lucky enough from a pure casting perspective to bring on Chloe Bailey and we really I mean Chloe Bailey hello got her at the exact right time in her trajectory this is film role. She had done some work on Grownish. Um, and no joke, after we left Albuquerque, probably weeks later, she was on the VMAs and, and releasing her first song, Have Mercy. And it's the Chloe you see today is very different th- than the Chloe we knew on set. And we couldn't like be more proud of seeing everything she's done in just a year since we, oh, we yeah, wrapped. No. Have Mercy, the music video came out in our first, like in week three of being in the edit room. And my editor and I were like, Wow, cool. <laughs> and it's funny. And then I realized, I was like, why does this song sound so familiar? Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, because on set between takes, she was like humming Have Mercy. And my editor pointed out she noticed it from the dailies. So I was like, oh, my God, that's why I know the song. Right. <laughs> and now you see her sister in the Little Mermaid trailer, and we're all just right. like jaw drop. Like, yeah. this is incredible. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. And you guys filmed last, like, last fall in Albuquerque. Last right? summer. Last summer. Almost okay. exactly. Very hot summer ago. in Albuquerque in a very, very Good busy industry competing against. <laughs> against Stranger Things, among many others, shooting yeah, in Albuquerque. It felt like everyone in the world went to Albuquerque. That's <laughs> if you ever want to work as an actor, move to Albuquerque. You'll work every day of your life. It's very busy there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about about Chloe and about Izzy as a character and talk about what she brings to it because the one of the things that I I notice as, as I watch I've, I've seen the film twice now is that she seems to have a, what I love about about uh, not secondary characters but characters that are not the main character is that they are they seem to have a, an arc going on that is just sort of just going on off camera or just out of view a little bit. And that aspect to it really deepens their relationship between Olivia and Izzy and also makes us more involved in so many ways. Let's talk about that. Well, actually, yeah. So each, each character other than Olivia, I would say each of the girls, you know, we have, um, Nina uh, who plays Camille and Carrie Matters who plays Josa and all of them really have these 
not only arcs, but I, I'm playing with the high school trope a bit. So they almost are going to play these archetypes and then they flip them on their head. So Chloe Bailey plays Izzy, who's popular, who's cool. She's a little effortless in what she does. She has clearly a lot of friends, but she's not your vapid popular girl. She yeah. gets into Stanford. She's smart. She cares. And, you know, she worries at the end of the day. She's the one who's, who's concerned about the reality they've created. And so that was something very important for me of saying, okay, here are what you think they are. Right. And here's actually so much that lies beneath the surface and that's kind of about social media too it's it's not just how you present it's um you learn there's a lot more going on underneath and behind the camera yeah. um and so izzy is a perfect example of that yeah i, I also won't be the first one to, to say this but it, it one of the things about their relationship in the film is that it seems as if the, there's a third person in their friendship which is social media and that they're relating to each other through social media and that that's something that this generation it's this ghost friend that's sort of there with them at the same time right yeah, well, on many levels, yes. So first of all, what Adam was saying, it was very important to me with social media. I didn't want to just spend all this time on screens. You have to yeah. see it. You have to get it. But it's more about how people react to each right. other because yeah. of social media yeah. and how they um, act themselves because of social media. In this case, you know, they are connecting over social media, but also that of their dead friend. Right. And I was struck in high school, actually, as a classmate of mine, um, ended up she passed away she did not take her own life but she passed away and it was very interesting the first time i ever saw someone's facebook continue on after they were no longer alive and you know their birthday popped up and like alerts popped up and i thought that was so disturbing and eerie um and but in a weird way you know it was cathartic for some people to, yeah. to post on their wall to talk to them and so that was something in the writing process that really stuck with me and 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 we worked to craft this presence between them and it's a way of them reconnecting yeah. because of this tragedy without having to talk about it without having to deal with it and i think at that age at any age it's hard to deal with such an immense tragedy yeah. but especially then it's like okay we don't have to get into this deep hard tough topic we can kind of skirt around it and come together without digging too painfully deep. Right, right. And Adam from Creative Plus's point of view, I'm sure like being able to kind of address those kind of emotions, like that's that's important. And it's also something that you want to be able to to address for the audience, but not go obviously so so deep as as Sabrina was saying, that the audience feels as if they're being lectured to or that it's a little bit, it's almost a little bit too earnest or something like that. There's a there's a sensitivity that has to be that has to be brought on, as well as a, a knowledge of what this this audience is looking for, right? I mean, the whole intention, especially with the ending of the film, is to leave people thinking yeah. and considering, you know, where this goes next, what role social and, and the school and Olivia's life take. Um, but no, I think with social media, we wanted to play it practical and, and nuance. I mean, I have a 16 year old niece and social media is so ingrained in their daily life, especially in COVID, because schools are allowing them to use their phones and they're kind of leaning on their phones instead of in person. And so, you know, I think it, it plays very nicely in the film. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the, the takeaway is yeah. open to everyone's interpretation because everyone has a different relationship with social media. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I can personally say I'm a little too addicted to TikTok, which is not healthy. <laughs> <laughs> there was also, Sabrina, I read there was also kind of a, a flip side of what the of the um, the anecdote you just told, which is about that that when you were young, there was a, somebody had also had like a, yeah. a, a whole mythical friendship, if not 10 friendships or something going on, right? Yes, that in this was this was in middle school and there was MySpace. Yeah. And in MySpace, you used to have to list your top eight friends, which is psychotic because like... <laughs> it's, to get in the eight. I mean, like, it's horrible. And then if like, what if someone's on your top eight and you're not on theirs? And what if you don't have eight friends? It's yeah. just like horrible. Yeah. Um, and there was a girl at my high school who um, had her top eight. They were her boyfriend outside of school and her friends outside of school. And a lot of the social currency was outside of school. And... Um, one day she came to school and had was crying and had said that her boyfriend had died in a car accident. And we learned eventually that she made up all the profiles, every single one. Uh. Um, and at the time, everyone was like, that's crazy, yeah. you freak. And in retrospect, it's just horribly heartbreaking that she felt that that was necessary. Um, she ended up leaving the school and it was, uh, other people got expelled for them bullying her. It was a big event and that was definitely a big yeah. point in writing this and, and inspiration um, yeah. because she found refuge in social media and it kind of turned against her yeah. um, because you don't control what you put out there. And it was a big lesson. Right, right. Let's talk about the rest of the amazing cast. You brought up Nina as well and Chloe Yu and, and just kind of filling out that. The Leo, the hello, exact, Oscar Leo winner, Melissa Leo. Melissa Leo. Exactly, Oscar winner. Let's talk about them and kind of bringing them into the fold and, and really making that whole team happen. Yeah, so... 
I think what's great about let's talk about the girls right for a minute it was great about those characters um they all kind of represent like I said sort of archetypes in high school but also pieces that Olivia herself kind of envies or covets they represent different sides of her personality that she wants to kind of express and have what I love about our cast in addition to their immense talent is they they all identify with pieces of those characters and they all have parts of themselves that you can tell they really brought forward. And I think, I mean, I think casting is so important and it's really, we really cast people who are in some ways pieces of those characters and it made those performances so much more nuanced. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and Adam, in terms of bringing on Melissa Leo for obviously, uh, you know, an Oscar winner and somebody who's gravitas sort of there is and anchors the film. What kind of that, that kind of energy is so important, isn't it? To kind of have a, have a, a, a an anchor there, a, a, an adult figure in this case, that would be yeah. sort of the one that, that in a lot of ways kind of represents, solidity and and authority but is also relatable and also somebody that we that we love as a as a performer right well and also from a business perspective i mean obviously when you're casting you're trying to make sure that you're getting as much reach as possible and bringing the credibility of someone like melissa leo and her resume to the project um she was amazing came on set really set a precedent for the other actors around her my favorite melissa leo story because again low budget indie film here is she she walks on set the first day and she's like i've done a lot of indies but i've never walked across the tarmac to my hotel <laughs> because we literally were staying at an airport hotel for budget purposes so across the street <laughs> but, when I, but when I first talked to Melissa about the part, actually, and she had read the script and she said to me, she's like, you know, I love the script. It's not about the adults. It's about how they're not serving the kids, but they're just they're trying their best, but they don't know what to do. Yeah. And she really understood that it was this adult presence mm -hmm. and it wasn't about them. And, and I think in a more you know a different type of actor they would have maybe tried to capture mm -hmm. something different yeah. than the intention of the script there and she really was that like presence where she's like i know my role as a principal i know that it's you you have to remain authoritative but you also it's not about me yeah and that was really uh great and she really yeah brought that to the table yeah i'm gonna wrap up with two questions first one is uh, for you specifically about what you learned uh, as a feature film director and and what do you think you're going to take from this film to your subsequent work and uh, and what really stands out for you in terms of uh in your filmmaking style yeah um you know I, I learned that you have to really love a movie to direct it and i do love this movie and i can still talk about it and enjoy hearing questions and comments and i think that's really important um you are living with it full time for a really long time from a casting perspective i would also say like i said finding actors who fit the role and it's not always I mean, they're hopefully great, but they're not always the best actor in the world, point blank. You have to be best for the part and really finding the the cohesiveness of a cast and understanding that every actor needs direction differently. You know, everyone everyone needs to be spoken to differently. There's not one size fits all. Um, and then also just, yeah, you're, you're bringing on partners in a big project and whoever you partner with in front of and behind the camera, um, they have to care about it. Yeah. I think that's As well, key because it's like the transparency at the start of the process because our actors, Sabrina did not get much rehearsal time with them. Yeah. So any free moments they had, whether it was, you know, lunch or weekends, they would be rehearsing. Yeah. And so everyone has to be committed to the outcome of the project and know what it is going into it. And each of our actors had a different reason or, you know, something that they saw value in joining the project. Yeah. And the crew too, you know, we, like Adam said, we were a very low budget movie. And so people who care about the story, yeah. I think think that's across the board everyone has to care and you can have your own reasons the only thing you're excited about but uh finding people who cared about the story was what made it work what made everyone able to work hard because they cared and that's uh, i think you know shows up yeah yeah and just following through on that list in terms of working with your production designer your your uh composer your your editor that kind of thing like making sure that that team that post-production team and and in production team was as as solid as possible what was that like in kind of finding all those collaborators for you uh, yeah, it was it was a great process. Um, it was really talking about the script first and foremost. Yeah. It's why are you interested? Because someone can say, here's my resume, here's how I see it, but it has to come from the story. And, and my DP and I, you know, before we even got to Albuquerque where we shot, we over Zoom did shot list of the movie and we went through each scene and it was more, what is the scene about? And then let's figure out the shots, you know, and that you have to, 
have to care about the story first and foremost. Um, and also we were a very female led team behind the camera as well. And that was something that this is a very feminine story, you know, and we actually described it, my DP and I as a, as a feminine thriller. Oh, um, but you know, and making sure that was represented across the board as much as possible in many ways was important. Yeah. Um, and also I love when people say, great, I get it. I love the story and here's a new idea and here's something different and, mm -hmm. and really capitalizing on everyone's individuality and expression. Yeah. We'll just wrap up with asking uh, what you guys hope that audiences take away from the film. What do you hope that they, they walk away from thinking about, I mean, there's so many ideas going on as we talked about, what do you hope that they, they walk away thinking about? Adam, we can start with you. I think just walking away thinking and, and talking about <clears throat> not just the ending, but the story itself, you know, where is Olivia now? What could have prevented the happening? what was Jane? Who is Jane? And like, how, you know, how did she exist within the story? And what does that look like after the ending? Because as you see in the end at the Stanford audience, she's still there. Right. Sabrina? Yeah, I love when people question things or say, oh, what if this happens? I think that's really great. I also think I've been really lucky. A lot of people have shared their own feelings about anxiety and pressure. And um, I think it's represented a certain type of that and, and the panic attacks and allowed people to say, because it is genre, because it is removed from reality, mm -hmm. people are able to say, oh, I recognize pieces of that in myself. And um, it's fostered a lot of conversations around mental health without being, you know, a message movie, obviously. And I think that's been really special. And uh, yeah, just hearing what people think has been great. Yeah, the best genre films always have a, a, a basis in reality something that we can relate to right yeah it's like you trojan horse an image or a message in a bit because you're able to say okay it's not too serious it's not too real but perhaps there's a piece of it i can relate to because it is removed and then it fosters conversation yeah well the film just finished up its theatrical run but it will be available online starting on friday uh thank you so much for being here thank you both of you ladies and gentlemen sabrina jaglum adam westcott the film is jane <laughs>